Я должен сделать небольшой клик моим русским зрителям. Привет, шнурки. Whatever you do for your job, continue to do that. Let me do mine. Hi, hello, how right, hey, what's going on everybody, Jay Hayes here, so as you can tell I've been practicing getting my wings, old school style of getting your wings had nothing to do with vaping, do you know what it means to earn your red wings, what we're going to be looking at today is a little bit unique, a very very high end RTA that I guess came out of the old Belarus, or Belarus, I think it's Belarus, but that reminds me of some type of like rich necklace you would buy at Tiffany's. What I don't understand about this is right off the jump is the name. Like it's not k or Typhoon or that sexy tank or remember that green raccoon? What in the f- what is going on? Don't make RTAs ever again. Thank God they're out of business. So this is called the BYKA and there's a hyphen in between there. V8. So Bika V8 RTA by Vape Russia systems. Vape systems in Russia. The only way that I heard about this was from a site that I typically buy stuff from, Stratum Store. A lot of people know it. I have plenty of reviews on a lot of the products that I purchased from there. And here's the deal. Not a lot of people are going to do reviews on this type of product just because, well, in order for you to find it requires a very, very extensive amount of looking. It's not like it's an exclusive Facebook type deal because there are retailers online all over the world that are selling this. Whenever I do a review i ask the people that are working here hey get me some cliff notes you know maybe some stickies the little sticky pads write some little notes on there so i know what i'm working with because i don't really open it up and i don't really use it let me just address that real quick because i know that there's people that are like well jay you should use it for two three weeks um i want you to understand something and i want you to to, to really step outside of your shoes in your box for a minute and look at it from my standpoint if i truly tried things for two to three weeks let's forget about the fact that i don't like doing it there was a certain line in this that really had me going i'm just going to read to you the translation of what it is in english belarus officially republic of belarus formerly known by its russian name belarusia i'm trying to say this without laughing classic type puff will suit lovers of rich taste and sensations of soaring. That is why I went outside to soar, because I wanted that tight puff, and I wanted to feel like an eagle. I don't think I achieved anything because I was using a Wasp Nano RTA, which doesn't have a tight puff, and I don't have any feathers, and I'm definitely not angelic, so I was not able to fly. If your goal is to fail at everything you do instead of succeeding, when you do fail, do you really fail? or do you succeed? A little bit of poetic justice for you. I know what you're gonna say, you've succeeded in failing. Let's just bring this down, let me show you everything inside of the box, put a build in it, and let you know my thoughts. So without further ado, flip it. Sensations of soaring. BYKAV8 by Vape Systems. Really nothing on the outside of this box. Apparently, it's supposed to come with all these different extra accessories. Not really 100% sure because I haven't even opened this yet. So here we go. As soon as you open it up, you're going to get a user manual, which is going to break down all the different accessories and parts. And of course, we are going to go over all of it. You get this little extra. It reminds me of a baby wipe with no stuff on it. It's very 
flexible. It's like a piece of skin. In your first peripheral bag, you're gonna get a 510 drip tip, which has a double O-ring situation, and then kind of their logo on it. Then you get a clear nano tank, which is basically gonna replace the metal that's on this, which I will show you how that works. So that is the clear tank that it comes with. Now keep in mind, this is a good thing, because usually on high-end devices, you have to buy different accessories for it. At least this comes with everything. Then you get a small black nano tank if you don't want to use the clear one or the metal one that is on there. This is where it gets a little bit interesting because it's very, very different. So you get these little air adapters right here, which are three different sizes, which I will go over. You also get this little tool, which you're going to need to put those in. Depending on how you want to use this is going to dictate which size duct. We are going to use this in a wide open configuration. I don't want to have to take a build out and then put a different build in. There is one already in the RTA, so then we'll compare the three of those. You do get some extra O-rings and some extra post screws, really nothing too crazy here. So let me just put that all back in the bag. If there's ever been a point in my life where I didn't like Ziploc baggies, now would be the time. I know it seems like such an arbitrary comment, but they're, they're very thin and you can't even feel it. So let's take a look at the RTA. Keep in mind, this has not been out of this plastic, so the way that you see it is the way that I got it. Feels very, very high-end-esque. Fucking bag. I don't like the bags at all. Let's look for any dings, dents, burrs, spurs, or cowboy boots. Does look pretty good. Some of the finish on these little grooves to grab the airflow control is a little jacked up. This is super intricate. To take the top section out of this, you're going to turn it to the right, not to the left. And that is how you're going to fill up the tank and dismantle the rest of it. Okay, that is the metal one right there, and then this is the plastic one. So if you don't want to use the metal and plastic, so to speak, I do wish this was more of an acrylic or a polished polycarbonate because I don't think that this is a very good look. When you take really high-end-esque type RTAs, I think more along the lines of this is a Wasp Nano, but that's not even a good example. So take the GT3 for a perfect example. This is not the stock glass that comes with it, but this is a polished polycarbonate. You could see inside there, they already have one of the air reducers, so we're just gonna take that out. And there is a little section in here which you could put a screwdriver to unscrew that. And you know the way that I'm gonna use this, right? I'm not gonna use any of these. Judging by these ports, I sense a very, very high level of mouth to lung. This is going to be the 2.3, the 1.7, and then the 1.4. Very, very, very small reduction of airflow versus a little bit more wide open, kind of a restrictive direct lung. However, the way that I'm going to use this is with none of those and just that big ass port directly in the center. Because what happens is over here where your airflow adjustment is, you can lock that down or open that all the way up and now you have all those ports. That kind of reminds me of the GT3 with all those little ports. On the bottom there, it is a little bit dirty. I don't know if that's from me. I kind of wish I would have looked at that prior to opening it up, but you do have three flathead screws, which of course we are going to take apart just so we can kind of gauge what the situation is. If it is dirty, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm just gonna let you know that now. It's not totally wet, but it is a little bit spotty on the inside there. It could have been cleaned up a little bit better than what that is. Again, that just seems like whatever was on there, yeah, it's not even coming off by the finger. So that's just a lot of staining from probably the acid bath or whatever it is that they use to clean it up. And removing of this, that's your airflow ring. Very, very simple. Looking at the post is very, very nice. While we do have the old school traditional style of, you know, screw, screw parallel to each other, you kind of wrap around, then you screw it down. What they implemented is something that is very, very much needed in the high-end realm are these little itty-bitty ledges that come up and that kind of catches the legs from flopping all about. Very, very vast well and really nice juice ports. Makes me wonder if when this is on, if that is actually considered juice flow control. And yes, it is. So once you have that on, you can kind of unscrew it a little bit 
and then you secure it with this piece up here and that's gonna kind of lock it down. If you were creative enough, you don't even really need a drip tip. You could just use that as your drip tip, or you could put a 510 in there if you so choose. Take a look at the 510 screw. You Not only do you have an O-ring to keep that pressure on the inside and to stop leaking coming out of the 510, you also have a little ridge that's cut in there where the O-ring sits. Very, very nice. Very nice. All right. Let's put a build in it. Once again, that is the BYKA V8. Let's bring it on the top. Woo! All right, back on top with the BYVK. 7, 8, 13, 24. Back on top with the BYKA V8 by Vape Systems out of Russia. Okay, so the build that I have in here is a 0.87, 46 watts. That's picking up at about a 6.1 volt, a lot of power. But guess what kind of chip this is? You don't ever see me use this in a review. What? You wanna see an amazing review? Go watch this jammy right there. Very, very high end. I think I've paid a grand for it. Only three made. Let's do it. <clears throat> With no inserts in this whatsoever, it's still a restrictive direct lung. All wide open airflow on the bottom. Remember, there are no plugs in this. So that tells you that if you were to use those plugs, you could dial this down to an extreme amount of restriction. Like, whoa. And then if it's not tight enough that way, you can also cut the airflow off on the bottom. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but right there, there's a couple little ports that you can also close down. So I don't know if I would tell you to go out and go buy this if you want something that's super high end, that's super airy, because those two configurations are extremely rare. The GT4 is very, very close to that. The Rain RTA would also be close to that. But that's about all I got. It's not something that's usually sought after in high end. There's a lot of flaws with this. Let me just go by them. First off, the machining of this thing isn't terrible. The way that it was cleaned is terrible. It could have been cleaned up a little bit better. Also, the machine oil. I thought we were at a point now where machine oil wasn't going to be a big thing for any kind of device that's being made. More companies that are high-end are very less likely to clean it as well as what China would on a $40 RDA or an RTA, which blows my mind. I get it that you want to get your products out there, you want to get them in the hands of the consumer, let everybody enjoy it. You make it very difficult to remove that machine oil taste that you're getting. Now, if you get an RDA or an RTA, Man, I, I can't remember the last one I've gotten from China that had that kind of flavor. Remember that no matter how much you clean it or passivate the stainless steel, there's actually ways to do it with crystal light. You could also do it with Kool-Aid, iced tea. Uh, water is not the best way to passivate it. Passivating is when you basically open up the pores of the stainless steel to clean it out. And you don't really destroy it, but that's a really good way to clean it. However, what people, including myself, fail to remember is when you're cleaning out these devices that you buy used or this is not used, this is brand new. The biggest problem and the biggest culprit is something that most people forget totally to fucking clean, and that's the O-rings. You'd be surprised how much those O-rings encompass whatever it was that it was in, whether that's a certain fruit juice or a machine oil situation. No matter what, 
O-rings are usually the culprit. So when you take it apart, when you first get it, if it comes with extra O-rings, throw those old ones out. Or, you know, put them aside and then put the new ones on after you've cleaned it and possibly passivated it and then put it together. I guarantee you no machine oil. I don't know why machine oil is even a thing on it, honestly. I, I really, that's something that is very, very hard for me to understand why that's forgotten. I love the juice flow control with this. And something else I want to counter is that guy in the comments. Juice control or juice flow control is ridiculous. It's pointless. That doesn't work. I swear to God, that's a comment. And it's not one comment. There's like 50 of these on one video. Do me a favor. Whatever you do for your job, continue to do that. Let me do mine. Juice flow control is a very, very relevant thing. I get it. Your build does have a huge input on that. I 100% agree. But if I'm using a 90-20, I'm gonna want that juice flow control all the way open. If I go down to a 50-50 and I don't rebuild it, you need to cut down the juice flow control because now it's gonna run through that shit like water. Do me a favor, get a bottle cap, put a pinhole in it, put VG 90-20 or just straight up 100% VG in that. Tell me how much goes through that. Now, do me another favor. Take a screwdriver or your head and poke a fucking hole in that same cap and then put that same juice in there. Tell me juice flow control doesn't work. Go ahead. Matter of fact, do one better. Get saran wrap, because maybe you don't have a bottle cap. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you don't know where to get a bottle cap. Get some saran wrap, put a pinhole in that. Put some VG in it, twist it. You know, like a, like a little ball, hold it. Bet you that VG doesn't run out well. Now, remove the VG out of it, take the saran wrap, bite it, and rip it. So it's a big ass fucking hole. So basically when you roll it up in a ball, there's no bottom. Put the VG in that, it's gonna go right through. Don't tell me juice flow control doesn't work. Basically what you're telling me is, let me give you a better option. You know those tubes, the tubes you blow up? That's how you do it. You hold it, you squeeze. If you don't squeeze it the right way or you don't squeeze it enough, you're only gonna fill up that tube so much. There's a little flap on the inside. When you push that in, the little fucking things you put in, if you're too lazy to blow into the tube, it opens up the flap. More airflow. That's like saying more airflow doesn't work. I, I don't know what half these people that comment on these videos do. Do you even vape? Like, I hate using that, do you even vape, bro? Corniest fucking comment ever. I do this every fucking day, okay? I know what works and what doesn't. This juice flow control is fantastic. It works very well. On the GT3, you have to have a certain drip tip that has friction or one that comes with it that allows you to adjust it on the fly. This doesn't lock in in any fashion. So if you've got rough lips or some chap jammies and the corners of your mouth are all crusty, as you go to pull away, you may turn this. And then the next problem you have is the drip tip that you put on the inside of this. When you put a 510 drip tip in this, it's gonna make this look really ridiculous and really tall. While it will take your lips off of the metal, and the metal shouldn't really be getting hot because it is an RTA, it's not an RDA, and you shouldn't be putting that big of a build in it because it doesn't really allow you because of the post configuration that's on the inside. You're gonna get a lot of lip funk all over this, which in fact will make, well, I guess that's a good thing because this little section up here on the top that you remove, turn right to unscrew, turn left to tighten it, is gonna kinda jack up your jammies, but, if you need to adjust the airflow or the juice flow control from the top, you just go right from that to the tip and then turn it. I really thought that opening this up all the way was gonna make it very, very open. I wouldn't put this in the same block as something like the K-Fun V5 squared. I think that was an amazing RTA. I got a lot of shit for that because I didn't know how to work the little thing and I should have read the manual. The people that tell me how to do reviews, I really wish you guys, and I'm not trying to attack anybody. I'm really not. I legitimately am not. I'm not even pissed off. I just think it's funny when there's that backseat driver. No one likes that guy in the back, or girl, or wh whoever the fuck you think you are, in the back seat, okay? telling me, hey, slow it down, hey, speed it up, hey, get there quicker. That's why there's Uber, because your friend doesn't want to take you to where you want to go anymore. He's going to call Uber for you. I don't want you in my car if you're going to tell me how to drive. $140 for this. Honestly, 
I don't think it's terrible. I think it's worth 120 to 140. I think that's pretty accurate. I would like to see more of a restrictiveness, maybe an O-ring on the inside of the actual stem. So as you turn this, you could probably put a thicker one on the top. So as you turn it, it is a little bit harder to turn. So this way you have that adjustability right then and there. The problem is, is something like the GT3, you can see the juice flow control as you turn it. So I know, okay, I'm putting a thicker juice in here. Let me open it up. And also another good thing about the juice flow control is if you don't know how to build properly or you build it with not enough of cotton you're able to shut that down a little bit to essentially compensate for what you're lacking in cotton but really the biggest thing is the 50 50 vg or whatever 40 60 or even a 70 30 it's going to be more runny than something that is thicker that's why i really like juice flow control and there's really not a lot of rtas that come out of china that are mass produced that have juice flow control because i don't think that they know the importance of it it's not a necessity it just makes things that much better if i had to pick between this and a gt3 there's no competition a gt3 all day this is just something that is different that's a high end that not a lot of people are going to have if i was to rate this device on a zero to ten i'm going to put it somewhere between a five to a 5.5 there was no real bad scratches or burrs anywhere over this it's just not something that i would go out and go buy if the juice flow control was a little bit smaller allowing me to put a drip tip over it sure and why isn't that a thing that high-end companies are doing? If you're going to make it a 510 configuration with something that protrudes, like a juice flow control, why not make a drip tip that goes right over it? Like it has a lip or an indentation on the inside, so it slides over it. Is it too difficult to make? Absolutely not. Take something like the Wasp Nano RTA that's made in China, that the actual drip tip is hollow. So you could essentially turn it upside down, and guess what? The juice is now on the inside. Even though mine is empty right now, you will never be able to see it. So you could just kind of gauge it and guess. I feel like I have to fill it up to show you. But I don't want to compare something that's Chinese to something that's high-end. To be 100% honest with you, for showing a Wasp Nano RTA, and it's either that or this, I'm going to tell you the Nano RTA all day long. I hate doing that kind of comparison. This, you get much better flavor from. You don't have to worry about machine oil. I know that's a little task to hurdle over. It's just that that's not, I'm not in the mood to jump today just not if i was to recommend this probably not you can buy me a couple shirts and i'll vape for you and blow it in your face that could work i've kept it real have you jesus